Hey guys and welcome back to the Mansion 4 tutorial. In today's video we're going to be going over the QTE system and finishing it off. So this is part 2 of 2. This is the final episode and in today's video we're just going to be, like I say, finishing all off. So we're going to be piecing all the different parts together that we made last time. For example, starting the widget, starting and ending the QTE. Moving left and right, so we're going to make it so that we can actually call these functions. So we can start, we can move, we can end it and stuff like that. And also creating the object, so we have the ragdoll if we collide with it and in the end game which I do have a video on as well for the end game if you'd like that and also constantly moving forwards. So without further ado, let's get right back into this video. And now I'm going to set up actually being able to have the character just move forward. So I'm going to go over to the left here where I have my movement input, which you should have by default. And I'm just going to simply move out to the input axes, move forward there. Your axis values will probably be connected to the scale value like that. What I'm going to do is hold down B, left click to get a branch, connecting that into there like so condition of this is going to be QTE active. False is going to go into our normal add movement input we have here. And then true, we want to go into another add movement input. So I'm going to come out of true and add movement input. The world direction, we're going to right click and get actor rotation. Return value, we're going to get forward vector and that will go into the world direction. And so this just simply means we're going to be constantly moving forwards. And actually, I've realized we don't need the forward axis value here, we can just leave the scale value as 1. So the scale value will leave as 1, meaning we're always going to be moving forwards when the QTE is active, and when it's no longer active, we're going to be back to just moving normally, like so. So since we're not using that for variable, we can actually delete it from up here, like so, as that's all we need from that. So I'll just update this code, like so, and then I'll delete it from here. So now this is going to make us move only forwards. What I also want to do is disable the normal movement for right and left while we're in here as well. So it's a very similar thing. We'll move this out and copy this branch and condition there. Again, connecting the false into the add movement input and true will go into nothing this time. So we don't want to be able to move left and right like this if the QTE is active. So we'll compile and save that. Now what I'm going to do is this is pretty much all we need to do in the character blueprint. However, actually, I'm going to set up calling the move right and move left. So I'm going to do this on a very simple way of just the A and D keyboard event. So I'm going to right click under here, get an A keyboard event. Out of pressed, I'm going to call function QTE move right. Oh, sorry, that should be move left since it's on A, not D. So A is QTE move left. And now D keyboard event will be call function QTE move right like so. So we can compile and save that. And what I'm going to set up is like I said, moving into the position for our QTE. So I'm going to do that via the level blueprint. So I'm going to minimize this and I'm going to add in a box trigger in order to start this QTE. So like I say, I want it to be on the Y here. So I'm just going to drag in a box trigger, placing it on here and scaling up so that we can actually walk into it and collide with it like so. So I think something like that is going to be good for me. So now we'll open the level blueprint. So go to blueprints, open level blueprint, making sure we still have that box trigger selected. And in here, I'm going to right click, get a begin overlap event for that trigger box that we have there. Then I'm also going to right click and create a reference to that trigger box so we can use that later on. On this begin overlap, out of the other actor, we're going to cast to third person character or whatever your character is named for you. So again, it can be first, third, or whatever you've named it. And then we're going to right click as third person character, promote this to a variable, and I'm going to name it character reference. I'm also going to move the trigger box reference down there. After this, we're going to hold on O, left click to get do once, connecting that in there. So as it sounds, it's only going to do this once. So if we walk back into the trigger box, it's not going to fire off again. Out of the completed, we're going to add a timeline, and I'm going to name this one move player or move player to start location, anything like that. And we can keep it in a play this time as we're only gonna be doing this once. We'll double click this to open it up. And I'm gonna set this to be about 0.5 seconds. So it's not too quick, it's not too slow. And I'm gonna add a float track, doing this the same way we did last time. So I'll name it move track, and I'm gonna right click, add a key with a time of zero, value of zero. Right click, add a key with a time of 0.5 and a value of one. So that's gonna go from the start to end of the timeline. We can close the timeline like so. Out of the move track, we're going to come out and get a lerp transform this time, not a vector, but transform. And that's because we want to change the player's location and rotation. 
So then we're going to get the character reference here. So get character reference. Now of this, we're going to set actor transform like so. It's bottom one here. Set actor transform. Plug that into the update of the timeline. The new transform with the blurb transform return value there. A is just going to be the player's default transform. So we'll come at the character reference and get actor transform. So where they are currently, like so, connecting that into A. And then B is going to be where we want them to go to. So this is where we're using the trigger box. So I'm going to get the trigger box, get actor location, because that's where we want to start. And then I'm also going to get its rotation. So get actor rotation as well. And then I'm going to come out of one of these and make a transform. The location and rotation in there, leaving the scale as one, connecting that into B like so. So we're going to be going from the player's current transform, so location and rotation, to the transform of where we want it to start. So if you don't want to use a trigger box, you can also just get, let's say, an empty character, put in a skeletal mesh in there so you can get more accurate of where you'd want it to start. However, I think the trigger box is going to be good for me, like so. We'll go back in the level blueprint here. Off of finished of this timeline, what we're going to do is get our character reference again, and out of this, we're going to call function QTE start, like I say, connecting that into the finished. So when we're into position, we're going to start the QTE. We'll come out of character reference again, and also create the QTE widget, like so. Now we could have merged the start and create widget in the same one, however, you might want to create the widget separately to starting it, which is obviously fine which is why I've kept them separate so you can do that if you wanted to. So we compile and save, and now that is gonna set up starting the QTE. So we're gonna be moved into the correct position, it will start it, and we'll get the widget on screen. So now let's also set up finishing it. So I'm gonna minimize this, select this trigger box, hold down Alt, and then drag out of it to duplicate it. I'm gonna put it there, as that's where I want the QTE to end. So with it still selected, I'm gonna go back into the level blueprint here, right click underneath here, and get to an end overlap event for that trigger box. Again, out of the other actor, I'm going to cast to my character, which for me is the third person character. As third person character, I'm going to get QTE active, as we only want to disable the QTE if it's already active. If it's not active, then obviously we don't want to do anything. So I'm going to hold down B, left click, click a branch, with that as the condition, connecting that into there like so. False, like I say, we're not going to do anything. And true, we're going to hold down O, left click to get it do once. So like I say, it's only going to do it once. And then we're going to come out of the character reference. So get the character reference, come out of it, and get QTE end, putting that into the completed of the do once there, like so. So now that's going to start and end the QTE. So let me select it, and here's C to comment it, naming this QTE start and end. We can compile and save that. So what I'm going to do now is set up a blueprint to change the prompts of the QTE. So we can close the level blueprint as that's all we need to do in there. Minimize this and we're going to create a new blueprint. So I'm going to go to my QTEs folder, right click, add a blueprint class, add an actor, and I'm going to name this one QTE BP like so, opening it up straight away. This one's very simple, we're just going to add a component, add a box collision, we don't need to do anything else with it, we don't need to change the scale, rotation, anything and go to the event graph. Delete these three nodes, right click on the box collision, add event, add on component begin overlap. Other actor, we're going to cast to our character, which again is just seeing if it's our character which is overlapping this box. As third person character, we're going to get the QTE widget reference, and out of that, we're going to set the QTE prompt. So and this is how we're gonna be changing the text on screen. And to have it different for each blueprint, so wherever you are in the QTE, we're going to right click the QTE prompt and promote that to a variable, naming this QTE prompt or text or anything like that, which makes most sense to you, putting that under there. And then I'm going to make sure this is an instance editable text up here or the little eye down here. And this means that we can change this text to be different for each blueprint. So we can compile and save. And like I say, that's it. Very simple to do. When we walk into this box collision, we're going to change the text on screen. So we can close that. And let me show you what it's going to do as well. So if I put in QTE BP here, what I can do is I can scale it up to be the size that I want it to be. And then you can see in the bottom right here, we have QTE prompt. So I'm going to set this one to be jump. As the first thing I want to do in this QTE is jump. And so when we enter that box collision, it's going to tell us to jump. So that's going to work perfectly for us. So now the final thing to do really, 
other than setting it all up, piecing it together, is creating the objects that are going to be in between it. So again, I'm going to right click, add a new blueprint class, and add an actor. I'm going to name this one QTE object BP, like so, opening that up as well. In here, I'm going to add component, add a static mesh, or actually I'll just add a cube. Obviously, if you have your own static meshes which you want, you can just add a static mesh and change it to be the mesh which you have. And then I'm also going to add a box collision like so. I'm going to scale that up so it's just bigger than the cube that I have here. So when we enter this collision, we're going to fire off the code of whichever you want. So it could be the end game or anything like that or restart. I'm going to the event graph. Again, delete these nodes. Right click the box collision, add event, add on component begin overlap with the other actor as our character, which for me is the third person character. As third person character, what I want to do is I want to ragdoll, which actually I will set up now as well. I do have a more in-depth video on creating ragdoll, however I'll set up a very simple one. So what I'm going to do is in the character blueprint, I'm going to right click and add a custom event, naming this ragdoll, and all we're going to do is get the mesh here and check out of it and set simulate physics. I'm going to tick it to be true. And what you want to do is also make sure that with the mesh selected, you change the collision settings to be ragdoll. So it'll be character mesh by default, change it to be ragdoll, compile, save that, and then back in the object blueprint, we're going to add to our character, call function, ragdoll there. So when we overlap with this, we're going to ragdoll. And then as well, off of here, you can have an end game code or restart level or anything like that. However, again, I'm not going to go over that part in today's video, but it's very simple to do. And you can ask in the comments if you'd like some help with it. So I'm going to compile and save that. And now let's put all these pieces together. So this is our QTE area. So what I'm going to do is here have an object. I'm just going to make it the whole length of this like so. And this is one which you have to jump over. So I'm going to make it like that. And again, this BP here says jump. So I'm going to move this over, make it a bit smaller, make this one up a bit. So this one you have to move right. So I'm going to duplicate this again with this one saying move right. Again, very simple to do. However, the results can be quite good as well. Obviously, all depending on how you set it up, which is good for you. Move that over and then I'll move this one over as well again. Naming this one move left. And then one final one, which I'll just have as jump again. So I'll duplicate both of those over like that. And then we end it there. So I think that's going to be good for me. So we have a very simple QTE obstacle course. So we have to jump, move right, move left, and jump again. So let's see if this is working. So we can hit play to test it. We walk forward. Let's be here. So it moves into the right position. It's going to move us into position there and start. QTE started, says jump. We can move left, we can move right, and we can jump. When we go into the box, we're going to fall over like so. Now the reason we fell over is because the move left didn't actually work. So let's test that out. So see how far we can move right. We can move right once, but we can't move left again. So let's see why that's happening. This is why it's good to always test your code. We couldn't move right anymore, which is good because we're at the maximum value there. We couldn't move left because the lane number was greater than one. So that should have worked. And it's because both of A and D were set to move right. So when I actually set up calling the functions, so the code was correct, I just, on A, I need to move left, not right. So we'll come out of A and move left. I wonder how many of you noticed that when it happened. So we'll compile, save, test this out again. So this should now work. We can start it, we can jump, we can move right, we can't move too far right. We'll move left, only the amount we need, perfectly like so. We jump and then the code ended here. So this works perfectly. Again, very basic QTE code which we set up. It's kind of an obstacle course mixed with an endless runner, mixed with QTE system like this. But again, hopefully you enjoyed. So we've got a jump, move right, move left, and then jump again. So we get the different prompts on screen with being able to jump, move left, move right. If we walk into these, we'll get ragdoll like so. And obviously if you don't want the player to be able to interact with these, you can just maybe put invisible walls or deactivate them or anything like that. So I think that'll be it for this video, so we don't know everything we want to do. We've created this very basic QTE system in which it will start, give us different prompts, and allow us to have ragdoll like that if we collide with the objects. And again, it's going to move us into the correct position 
when we enter it. So if I go into the box collision, there it is. Jump, move right, move left, and we can move the only amount we need, and jump. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.